So I'm going to give you an overview of my new module. It is a T-Track 930mm uh, triple module if you like. About 36 inches wide and two main lines and quite a lot going on in the middle here. The only difference is that down here is another main line. Well, uh, it's these show that there are tunnels here. The tunnels are because in the middle of all of this is a Swiss Alps kind of scene, snow capped mountains, steep rises. And there you'll find there will be a train climbing from here. This is an extension of about 100 mil or three and something inches. And it'll climb up into the middle. So let's have a look at those. I'll just bring it up. This is uh, Extract CAD, uh, which is a completely free model train design program. Very capable, run very well, and uh, runs on just about any platform, whether you're on a Linux, a Mac, or a Windows. It doesn't do phones yet, but maybe one day that'll happen. Extract CAD. Okay, let's have a look. We're going to cut in another layer, and this is layer for the, I call it, under down, because it's down under. It's one and five eighths below the zero level of the main line height. Let's just zoom in a little bit so you can have a decent look at it. Come back up here. And here we have a narrowboat canal in a lock. These are all scale scenes. S-C-A-L-E-S-C-E-N-E-S dot -E 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 com. Made out of paper. They look fabulous. So this is a canal boat in a lock. Coming down to these canal boats here. And over in this end we've got a bridge with a canal boat poking its nose out there. So all right, let's come back down a little bit. As I said, one and five eighth. He's going to come under the main lines because we've got a mountain here, you see, under the main lines. And I'll just put the rest of his track in. There we go, like that. Now, the trick is, I've got a grade here, quite a significant grade, and the train needs help. The locos will all be Fleischmann 7305 and 7307, which are N-scale cog rail. There is a small toothed track running in the middle of the engaged track. And there's a cog sitting down underneath the loco that connects with it and helps it do some quite significant climbing ability. Uh, in fact, over this side of it, you'll find that I am 17.9% in grade, which is a significant rise, but the Fleischmanns are well known to be able to handle up to 25% grade, so it should be able to do this without any problem. So, let's just give it somewhere to go to. We'll cut in the top station. comes in here through a double slip top station. There's also a line down here I'll open up in a minute. So, let's find a train. Oh look, here's one now. Uh, these are small logos. They're only about 65 mil, inch and a half long, two, two and a half inches roughly. They're only small. Uh, electric logos, they're supposed to be. And these are just 55 mil, so uh, down to two inches, or two inches. Little four-wheel cars. Because it's a cog railway, the loco is nearly always at the rear, uh, the valley side, if you like, the lower side of the line, so that it can push up the hill and control the train on its way back down the hill. It's got all the braking. And here's the cars are always at the higher end of the train. So let's let's set him off. 
See, one of the beauties is I can play trees. So, we're going to go and begin. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see I've just transferred the light. So he's now going to reverse. We'll give him some speed to come up. Now normally that's about the speed. He'd be doing about 5 miles an hour or 8 kilometers an hour. He wouldn't be going very fast up the hill. But because I want him there, he's going to do 100 miles an hour today. Just to get up there. And out of the road. Okay. <coughs> now you can see why we've got a tunnel here. Because this is all mountainous. There's tunnels here. Here is some more rack rail. All the way up to here is the rack rail for the underdown line. Now this train up here, we can't leave him on his own sitting in the middle of nowhere. So let's give him a, a station to sit on. And as I was saying, uh, 5 and 7 eighths is the current height of this fellow. Actually, uh, what I can do is jump out of there for a minute. And the preferences, and we'll go back into metric. And millimeter. Say so OK. There we go. 150 millimeters. So that's fine. Let's cut in the other tracks for him, and 6 and 14. OK, so we'll go back to the overview. We've got this outside train, and we've got this train starts from here, and they all end up at the top. And I've got to be really clear about this. There is no interaction with the T-track. The T-track lines will run through there without any slowing, stopping or any interference. There's no connection to it whatsoever. All of this is separate. All of this is run on Arduino computers managing the whole process. So we zoom in and we'll go back to trains and I'll let this red train go home. Uh, red train go home. And then we'll scoot down to here and we'll watch him go around the tracks. Oh, nice work, Ian. Here is an uncoupler. So let's uncouple him. We'll zoom it a little bit more. Over there. How's that? This is a sector plate. S-E-C-T-O-R, sector plate. You'll find them on some branch lines where you don't have room for a um, turntable. And it's just a single line which is on a small plate, often manually pushed to shift. There's not actually two pieces of rail, but it's how this needs to run. So let's bring the loco on just very gently onto the plate. Stop him there, that'll do. Switch him to the other track. Reverse. Now they're electric, so they'll just come into the servicing shed. And stop. OK. So that's a sector plate. Quite a simple little device. Maybe some of you that are designing your own railways might find a need for a branch line. You won't find them on a main line, but you find them on a branch line, generally. But there is another option. And the other option is to have a traverser, which shifts the line horizontally flat. So let's just bring it up. Traverser. Oh, look at that. And look, here's a train we had earlier. So what we'll do is we'll go over to trains, shift that out of the road, and we're talking about the red train. We'll bring him into the station, and then we'll cut him off.
let him run onto the traverser. Stop there. Shift up to the next position. Again, there's only one track. It's just I've got to use two tracks to draw this up. And he runs into the station, blah, blah, blah. And that's a traverser. So I hope you've enjoyed the look at how this is all going to run. Notice also, because I'm running small trains and considerably tight rises, I'm running on very narrow radius, 168. Or if we want to talk into archaic measurements, uh, uh, preferences, English, and uh, 7 eighths. Okay, three and a half inch radius in end gauge. You might find that a little bit tight, but I'm only working with four wheel locos and a little six wheel loco four wheel wagons. So it should be able to handle that without any problem. We will see as we get closer. So there you go. That's our line for our super wide module. Thank you very much for your interest. I'm open to any queries, any suggestions on how this can be made better, things I could do, and uh, I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at my super wide module. Thanks very much. Please click like, subscribe if you wish. There won't be much traffic, but every now and then I'll put a new video on. Thank you.